Team QEH Awards 2020. Well, hello and a very warm welcome to the Team QEH Staff Awards 2020. This year really has been like no other. And as a result, we're holding our awards in a very different way to normal. However, more than ever, we felt it was important to really celebrate um, and honor all the hard work that you've put in over the past 12 months. Never before have we asked so much of you as staff, both in the NHS and at the QE. And many of you have been redeployed, you've worked in different ways, you've learned new skills, you've stayed away from your family and friends, or maybe you've kept the home fires burning. Whatever you've done to support our trust, the patients we treat and the community we serve, thank you. Now this year we received a record-breaking 550 entries for the Team QEH Awards, which really shows that your hard work and dedication has not gone unnoticed by your colleagues and the general public. Every single person nominated for an award should be exceptionally proud. Our awards cover 12 categories from Leader of the Year to the Chairman's Award for Research and Innovation. And alongside our normal awards, as this year was a special year for QEH turning 40 in the summer, we will also be revealing the winner of the QEH 40 Hero Award this evening. Before we begin the award ceremony, I just want to say once more to all of those watching uh, this evening how exceptionally proud I am to be the chairman of this wonderful institution. You really are all QEH heroes to me. Thank you for everything that you do for patients, for our communities and for one another. It is greatly appreciated. So without further ado, I hope you're sitting comfortably with a glass of something special to hand. And I now want to hand you over to my co-host for these events, our Chief Executive, Caroline Shaw, who's going to be introducing our first award. The Team QEH Awards 2020. Thank you, Chairman. And our first award this evening is We Listen. This award is so, so important. It's about listening to our patients and colleagues and demonstrates a real sense of making a difference in the care we give. I am delighted to say that we had over 46 nominations for this important award. And the shortlisters are... The We Listen Award. The finalists are... Kaylee Darling. Kaylee was nominated because she goes above and beyond to support all the midwives in this unit. During the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, Kaylee took the time to listen to colleagues, providing a safe space to simply allow emotions to be heard, unpicked and understood. Kaylee is kind and gentle in her approach and provides a bridge between the ground floor staff and management. She is always empathetic and never makes anyone feel rushed. She builds relationships with expectant mums, which she very carefully nurtures, often finding a solution that means women are supported and cared for in the best way for them. Julia Denya. Julia listens well to all concerns or worries and makes sure she finds a solution immediately for all queries. Julia is very considerate when dealing with both staff and patient matters and does everything in her power to improve the working life of her team. She is dedicated and stays back after her duty hours to help her team manage difficult situations. When in clinical areas, Julia makes sure all the patients are getting adequate care and treatment within the four hour time period and continuously monitors the department. So thank you, Caroline, and some amazing colleagues there. And the winner is Julia Denya. I was really surprised and touched. It means an awful lot. I'm going to get tearful, but thank you very much. I think it's not just a recognition of me, it's for the entire team that they've actually 
They're a really good team, a wonderful nursing team, and it's a privilege and a pleasure to be their manager. Um, and it's kind of a reflection back that I'm obviously doing something right. Moving on, our next award is the WE ACT Award for which we received 45 nominations. And this award recognises an individual who provides exceptional person-centred care through listening to and understanding the needs, goals and wishes of patients, service users and their families. And who then delivers that care with exceptional compassion and dignity. So let's see the finalists in this category. The WE ACT Award. The finalists are Dr. Andy Gregg. During the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, Dr. Gregg took on a very different role and went above and beyond to support the intensive care unit. He provided expertise in performing percutaneous tracheostomies, patients requiring prolonged respiratory support. This is a highly skilled procedure which Dr. Gregg excels at and he went out of his way to actively make himself available at short notice to perform these procedures in order to help our patients, aiding their recovery. At the same time, Dr. Gregg helped keep the elective surgery services going, all the while smiling, keeping calm and offering himself to anyone that needed support. Dr. E. Lim. E. has shown an outstanding and exemplary dedication in her role as a doctor. She is a great team player and managing rotor for the junior medical team. She has addressed her fellow juniors' concerns and is always approachable and caring. She is fair and believes in parity in distributing workload that led to significant improvement in the working life of the junior doctors. She actively listens to her colleagues as well as patients. E is a keen learner and will challenge her colleagues if she seems this is for the patient's safety and best interest. She will do this in a non-judgmental and well-balanced manner and attitude. Wow, what a lineup. It makes me so terribly, terribly proud to be the Chief Executive of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. And the winner is... Dr E Lim. Firstly, thank you to Queen Elizabeth Hospital Kings Lane for this award and I think it's really exciting to get this award from the hospital. I want to thank all my colleagues who I have worked with for the past one year, especially in acute medicine and gastro medicine. Uh, they are really helpful and I've learned a lot from this hospital and from all my patients and colleagues. Our third award is our Care Award, We Care. Again, so important for the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. And this is a very special award because it went out for public vote. I'm absolutely delighted to say that we had over 118 nominations. This award is about having the courage to speak up, to care for our patients, to collaborate with staff, and to make that real personal difference to patients and their families and our community. During the last year, we've seen many staff on many occasions providing care for our patients, which is personal and special. But the finalists tonight are... The We Care Award. The finalists are... Kaylee Ord. Kaylee has demonstrated an outstanding contribution to AMU. She demonstrates holistic, non-judgmental, person-centred care. Kaylee is adaptable to the needs of care that has to be delivered across the whole trust. She puts patients and colleagues first and her compassion is truly noticeable. Kaylee utilises her warm, flexible manner with a strong evidence base, 
demonstrating detail and quality in her exemplary practice. Patients and carers appear to respond very positively to Kaylee's enthusiastic, informed, collaborative, caring and responsive manner. Kathy Gray. Kathy goes way beyond her duty in her role as a patient support worker. Never have I seen anybody work with such passion and with such genuine caring personality. She is fabulous within her role, particularly when working alongside those patients requiring enhanced care needs and extra supervision. She has the patience of a saint, is always upbeat and promotes a positive environment for both staff and patients to enjoy. Kathy has the ability to settle distressed patients during extremely worrying times of change to their lives. She comes across with such kindness, sympathy and understanding within the way she speaks to staff and our patients. Katie Ball. Katie is an exemplary newly qualified nurse. She cares for both her patients and team members equally. During the COVID-19 period, Katie supported a patient at the end of his life. She worked closely with the family and the patient. She made the distressing time for both of them as good as it could be. She sat with the patient and held his hand, spoke calmly, reading out the letters that the family had sent. She was attentive and compassionate and made sure the patient was comfortable, safe and dignified. She did more than that had been asked of her by the family and the patient, so all felt that they were part of this distressing time. And the winner of the 2020 We Care Award is Katie Ball. Um, well, it's lovely to be recognised for this award, um, but I really couldn't do it without the team that I work with. They all just such wonderful people, and so really this is for everybody. I think I'm just doing what I do for a living, um, but hopefully whoever nom nominated me thought that I perhaps made somebody's life just that little bit better in this time that we're in that we're struggling in so it's really lovely next up is the Patient Safety Champion Award for which we received 18 nominations. And this award recognises an individual who's made an outstanding contribution to improve patient outcomes, improve safety, or the standard of care delivered. The individual actively tackles and improves the patient safety culture and outcomes within their area or across our hospital. Let's see who the finalists are. The Patient Safety Champion Award. The finalists are Nicola Miller. Nicola protects patients by making sure all equipment is safe to use, clean and appropriately serviced, removing equipment that is broken. She notices minor changes to products and her curiosity for checking new products means the products that are unsafe for neonates have instead been changed to something that is safe. She has also helped source new products to make colleagues' jobs easier. She has reduced the cost expenditure by finding cheaper and better products for use and has sourced products to help staff keep their skin intact when frequently washing them. Andrea Bogor. Andrea has been flexible and adaptable in the way she has delivered PPE sessions to a variety of staff in a variety of settings. Her passion for ensuring staff keep both themselves and their patients safe is evident in the way that she teaches, monitors and evaluates her teaching in action by visiting ward areas and observing practice. Andrea never rests on her laurels and has really shown great commitment and leadership in ensuring staff understand the need to stay safe and wear the correct protection at the correct time. Andrea also ensures everyone who teaches these skills are up to date and given the most up-to-date information in a timely manner. Helen Smith. Helen was asked to take on the implementation of PPE safety officer role across COVID-19 areas. At the time, it seemed this was just about completing a rotor. However, Helen identified many challenges that needed resolving. Helen worked with the recruitment and development team 
to ensure the training was full and complete for each PPE officer at short notice. There were difficulties in how the role should or could work, but at no point did Helen ask to hand over the project or consider not completing the task. She persisted and eventually the role was implemented, which has contributed to the safety of patients and of staff. And the winner is Helen Smith. It was such a surprise really to be nominated um, and I was really delighted with the nomination to be honest and didn't expect to receive this so I'm very honoured. You know you do your job, you do what's asked um, and that's the expectation from us that we, we do what's asked and it's just lovely to have the recognition of that. Our next award is a very special award indeed. It is our Volunteer of the Year Award. The Queen Elizabeth Hospital is so special in many, many ways, but having over 350 volunteers who support our staff and patients daily makes a huge difference. The Volunteer of the Year Award. The finalists are Paul Bush, Paul is a valuable member of Gayton Ward. He delivers high standards of care to all our patients and is always happy to help staff. Paul shows compassion and is proud of his role. He even came in on Christmas Day to help staff with menus and tea rounds. Paul has developed a picture menu folder and takes time with patients to ensure they are happy with their choices. Paul has played a vital role with our students with learning difficulties and they have felt at ease when Paul was on the ward. Wayne Fish. Wayne works tirelessly to improve Hospital Radio Lynn and ensure our listeners, the patients, have good quality, relevant content on their bedside radios. He developed an Alexa app so listeners outside the hospital can also hear our programmes. He has further extended our service to include Sunday church services and other content which have reached a bigger audience in West Norfolk. Wayne has ensured that our members are able to continue to provide our service by home working and provided engineering support. In addition to his day job, he provides good leadership to our teams and is a valued member of our board of trustees. Jack McAllister. Jack is a very pleasant young man who is very eager to help. He has overcome his own limitations and developed into a trusted and valued member of the volunteer family. He puts himself forward to help out, either on the front desk with the pharmacy or even in sterile services. He is hardworking and ready to stay on late or come in at short notice. He consistently demonstrates the values and behaviours expected of all our staff. The special winner of this award is Jack McAllister. Um, basically, I feel um, really I'm pleased and chuffed about it because really, because I'm, I'd like to say a real big thank you to everyone that's nominated me for the Team QH Awards um, 2020. And also, I'd like to just make sure you know um, everyone um, knows that I'm, I'm really chuffed and I like helping people. Moving on now, our next award is the Growing Our Own Award. And again, many, many nominations were received for this award. It recognizes an individual in the early stages of their career and who has joined our hospital within the last two years. The individual will have made a notable achievement in their learning and development, and their learning journey will have transformed their own lives and has positively impacted on the lives of others. Let's see who the finalists were for this award. The Growing Our Own Award. The finalists are 
Debbie Wilding. Debbie is based in Maine Outpatients Department, where she has gained competencies in all specialties and is an extremely valued member of our team. She has a passion for learning and has every desirable quality of an excellent nurse in the making. During the early stages of COVID-19, Debbie asked to be redeployed for a ward-based position so she could be of greater use to colleagues who needed help. Debbie took it upon herself to arrange additional home support for the wife of a patient on the ward. She is a shining example of the trust values. Rebecca Perris. Rebecca is a fantastic junior doctor who goes above and beyond for both her patients and her colleagues. She takes time to sit down with her patients and really listens to their concerns and fears, and then diligently make sure every single thing that could be done for them is completed promptly. Beyond her exemplary clinical care, Rebecca has taken on the role of Joint Junior Doctor Forum Chair, a role which she has hit the ground running with. Due to her hard work, she has transformed the Junior Doctors Forum into a lively and engaged community. Rebecca is an all-round friendly and helpful point of contact for junior doctors who need support. Alice Court. Alice is one of our apprentices across the Women and Children's Division. Alice joined Team QEH in February and she has excelled from day one. She embodies our organisational values and behaviours. She seeks to deliver excellence, seeing tasks through, helping and supporting others. She sees how effective teamwork makes a difference and can be relied upon at all times. Alice is highly professional and contributes actively within the Women and Children's Administration team to propose suggestions for improvement and change. Alice is a great example of why bringing in an apprentice is beneficial to business. And the winner is Alice Court. I'd just like to take a moment to thank not just the lovely team in my office but all of QEH for providing me with so much comfort and laughter when I wasn't able to see my family in London during lockdown and to anyone interested in a career in the NHS I would wholeheartedly recommend an apprenticeship. I've learnt so many great new skills and made so many fantastic relationships. Thank you QEH. Our next award is a very special award. It's Behind the Scenes Award, in tribute to the many staff daily who support all staff and patients behind the scenes, often known as the unsung hero, providing services to help us run our hospital on a daily basis. So I'm delighted to announce that the finalists are The Behind the Scenes Award. The finalists are Justin Bunton. Everyone on West Rain Ward is impressed with Justin's positive attitude and cheerfulness. He greets everyone with a smile and chats to the patients while he works, which has provided a welcome distraction while visitors are not allowed. He has gone above and beyond his role, improving the patient's day with a happy smile and cheery greeting and showing an interest in their lives. He has also been offering to buy newspapers and magazines for patients who are unable to leave the ward and refusing to take payment for these items. He really is an asset to Team QEH. Rachel Russell. Rachel has been described as the backbone of the audiology department. She is the first port of call for our patients and goes beyond the call of duty to ensure patients are treated with dignity and respect. She has been known to help patients repair their hearing aids over the phone. On another occasion, Rachel used Google Maps to help direct a patient on the telephone to a community clinic when they had gotten lost. She maintains the diaries for appointments and always tries to utilise the abilities of staff for the best care outcome for each patient. Rachel is passionate about improving the patient experience and our department simply could not function without her. Stuart Nimmo. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the community generously donated food, drinks and toiletries to all our NHS staff. 
Stuart has gone above and beyond his job role to make arrangements for delivery, storage and distribution. He visited all wards and departments of the hospital on foot, delivering all donations to the staff. He has also been out in the community giving out Easter eggs and other donations to schools, care homes and the Perfleet Trust. This has all been done alongside his own job of managing our large catering department where we have also had to make changes due to COVID-19. And the winner of this very special award and very well deserved, I have to say, is Stuart Nimmo. I feel I should privilege to win this award because, like you said, I come and do my job day in and day out and I don't expect to be rewarded in this way for it. I just see it as me doing, being part and parcel of a team and actually doing my job. So the next award this evening is for the Leader of the Year. And again, we received many, many nominations. And this award recognizes brilliant leadership by an individual who demonstrates a positive and sustained impact on patients, service users, carers, and or staff, whilst role modeling our important values. The Leader of the Year Award. The finalists are Dr. Alistair Steele. Dr. Steele provided exemplary leadership skills during the pandemic. He reorganised the anaesthetic rota to ensure that the department provided superb support to critical care and the emergency department. He did this with wide departmental consultation. Alistair demonstrated great care and empathy towards all team members who were affected, either by sickness or anxiety, ensuring that no one worked beyond their personal capability. He is deeply committed to his role, and I have often observed him working late in the day to ensure all needs are addressed. Alistair truly lives the trust values. Pamela Chapman. Pamela is an incredible leader, a superb matron, and just as importantly, a wonderful human being. She always has time for everyone, always so kind and supportive. Pamela has led the A&E departmental response to COVID-19, particularly the nursing side, including the relocation of half the department, as well as protocols, reconfiguration, maintaining safe practice, innovating working, and collaboration outside the department with the day surgery unit. She has led by example and has taken her team with her and has attention to detail without missing the bigger picture. Judith Spaulding. Judith is a very fair and strong leader who is approachable and friendly. She does everything in her power to support her staff to provide excellent care to her patients, always going the extra mile, such as arranging social events which encourage team working and rest periods. Judith never asks her team to do anything that she herself would not do and often will step into the roles of others to help her team. She has introduced a weekly email to make sure the whole team are kept informed, even when meetings are not possible. Her door is always open for support and clinical supervision. And the winner is... Pamela Chapman. It means that um, I get it right. Um, and we don't always get it right. Um, I'm incredibly honoured to uh, represent a leader and everything a leader should be. Um, and I will continue doing the best for the staff and the patients. So I'm incredibly overwhelmed and actually slightly lost for words, which never happens. The next award is our award for the non-clinical team of the year. Again, we received many, many nominations. This award is about a team of individuals who have worked above and beyond in supporting staff 
and patients in our hospital. Collectively working together to make a difference and help us run the hospital so very well. And the finalists are... The Non-Clinical Team of the Year. The finalists are... The Site Team. This team work hard all day long behind the scenes, liaising with staff, from cleaners to the chief exec, about how the hospital is running, maintaining oversight of those coming in from ambulances, GPs, community, other hospitals, and the medically fit patients who are being discharged. They go beyond their role daily and help with whatever is necessary to maintain flow through the hospital. This includes becoming a porter, a healthcare assistant, a housekeeper, and many other roles at a moment's notice to help teams provide the best care for our patients. The Waste Team. The Waste Team are our heroes in orange. Barely any patients know who they are, but without them the hospital would be full of rubbish and clinical waste. They are always happy, smiling and willing to help. Nothing is too much for them. They are also at the front line, having to remove the waste from the wards, whether it has come into contact with COVID-19 or not. They just get on with it, making it a better and safer place to work for all the doctors and nurses. We simply could not function without them. And the winner of this award and a team I've spent a good few hours with since I've been here as a chairman is the Waste Team. They have done great work over years and years and, and it is fantastic to be rewarded. We've done without award ceremonies for a while um, and it's just so great that somebody recognised them. Not me, I didn't nominate them. Somebody inside the Trust nominated them and I'm really, really proud of their efforts. Our next award is the Clinical Team of the Year, open to the public for nominations, with the winner chosen by public vote. This award recognises a clinical team that's gone above and beyond the call of duty and has made an outstanding difference to our patients. The team will be an exemplar in working together effectively to deliver clear benefits for patients and their families. And the finalists are The Clinical Team of the Year. The finalists are Tilney Ward. As a very junior team, Tilney Ward not only rose to the challenge, but excelled in providing high quality, multidisciplinary, innovative, holistic care throughout the ever changing and daunting task they faced. 50% of the registered nurses have been qualified less than two years. They have grown in ability and confidence daily with some of the sickest patients brought to our door, often requiring aerosol generating procedures. They acted with total dedication, enthusiasm and a thirst for knowledge in dealing with scenarios completely out of their comfort zone. Critical Care Our entire critical care team, from our medical and nursing staff to our physios, domestics, housekeepers and all the staff who were redeployed to us have been amazing throughout the pandemic. They coped with rapidly changing environments and guidance. In such a difficult time, we have been amazed at how selfless people were for volunteering to come and help. It was such an unknown and anxious time for us all at work and at home, yet so many came to assist and the substantive staff welcomed and supported all despite their normal working hours being completely disrupted. The Emergency Department The Emergency Department was split into two at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. The teams were suddenly thrown into new working environments, welcoming new colleagues to their team from the day surgery unit, rapidly becoming one big team. The support both teams gave to each other when they were thrown together has been a pleasure to see. They have created a cohesive service, utilising everyone's individual skill sets and strengths to offer the best service to our patients 
the most difficult time of their careers. And the winner is Tilney Ward. I couldn't be prouder. It's been a really tough year, but um, for all the lows, there's been as many highs. So I'm thrilled for them. They've gone above and beyond. Their skill acquisition this year has gone beyond anything we could have even dreamed of. Um, and they've done it with a sense of humour, teamwork, compassion. Um, yeah, they've been incredible. Our next award, again, is a very special award. It is our Living Our Values Outstanding Contribution Award, chosen from 12 monthly award winners. And the finalists are... The Living Our Values Outstanding Contribution Award. The finalists are... Newsa Russell. Newsa was integral to the delivery of some of the thank yous we put in place for staff throughout 2020. She and her team became very busy over Christmas as they looked after staff using their free meal voucher or having their free breakfast. And then in January, she absolutely knocked it out of the park with support she gave for our first staff quiz. Newsa is passionate about her team and their welfare and in promoting the hub as a great place to eat and take a break. She has come in on her days off to help she really looks out for her team and does all of this with a really positive attitude and a smile. A real credit to the QEH. Karen Strong. Karen is the perfect example of living our values. She promotes safe, compassionate care for the patients on her wards and she provides support for all her staff. Whenever you ask Karen to do something, she always goes the extra mile. During COVID-19, Karen was responsible for collating and reporting COVID-19 related admissions, swabs and patient deaths and working alongside the information services team to ensure accurate data was reported both internally as well as externally, a hugely important role which she excelled at. Emma Carlton. Emma has been truly outstanding. She has demonstrated the most amazing leadership during a difficult time here at the hospital. Emma has trained staff to perform fit tests for PPE, enabling staff across Team QEH to be tested promptly and safely. Emma has been invaluable, a source of reliable, accurate information at a time when our working lives have been more uncertain than ever before. She has remained positive and focused throughout and has made sure that we have the correct equipment, even working with the University of East Anglia to produce a new and improved fit test solution. And the winner is... Karen Strong. So I'm really pleased about winning the award. Um, obviously it's come as, 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 as a surprise, um, very proud. Um, obviously the award's not just for me, it's, it's for all the teams that I work with and all the teams that work so hard throughout the Trust as well. I hope my teams will be pleased. Um, um, I certainly get great support from all of my team members, um, so hopefully um, they'll be as pleased as I am that, that I've, I've been successful in, in winning. So the next award is the Chairman's Award for Research and Innovation. This award will be presented to an individual who's demonstrated exceptional innovation in their work or creative thinking to develop and improve our services. The individual will have changed the way they work or introduced new systems or roles that have made a real difference to patients either directly or behind the scenes. The Team QEH Awards 2020. We come now to the presentation of the Chairman's Award for Research and Innovation. I have to say in my near 40 years service in the NHS, 
I've always recognised that this area has been particularly important in delivering real improvements for patients and in this organisation I have to say we consistently punch above our weights when it comes to um, the activities that we have in, uh, in research and development. This again has been a really, really difficult decision for me uh, to make. This is proper recognition for some fantastic work that's been done um, in this field. And the winner is... Samina Stefanescu. I'm a consultant dermatologist. I uh, do see lots of patients with different skin cancers or inflammatory conditions. My focus and my research usually is around inflammatory lesions such as psoriasis. Recently I wasn't a, a huge fan of research till a few years ago since I took over the what we call a BABDIR which is a registration of the uh, database of patients with psoriasis in the UK, in the whole um, UK um, and that was quite challenging. Starting from that I started to be more interested in, in psoriasis usually and uh, approaching now prospective studies with new biologic treatments that could help and save the lives of the patients. I really feel proud, first of all. Um, I have humbled because obviously it was something that I never dreamt a few years ago that it's going to happen to me. And I would like to prove that um, you know, I deserve this, this um, uh, nomination and to move forward and to try to do my best to um, uh, get more research into this hospital. So many, many congratulations, Simina. Well, first of all, I have to thank everybody and um, I'm, I'm actually um, thrilled about this. I never expected this to happen and um, yeah, it's all great news. I'm still mesmerizing. I'm still uh, absolutely uh, not thinking it's true, but I have to get used to it and hopefully um, make sure that I deserve it and prove to everybody that it was, um, you know, um, a great prize and, um, you know, all the best for the future for this hospital. This year, we have a very special award to celebrate our 40th birthday. This is a QE Hero Award in recognition of an individual who has provided care and support to patients and to staff. An individual who has gone above and beyond in delivering services on a daily basis. So for this really, really special award, the judges were looking for evidence of a number of um, important factors. First of all, compassion and concern being shown for the well-being of patients, carers, our colleagues. Secondly, the individual being a valued member of their own team, listening and involving patients, carers or colleagues, and helping them make choices and contributions. And thirdly, showing special qualities and contributions not being recognised as much as they really should have been. And then finally, the individual maximising opportunities for colleagues to achieve their own full potential so that we deliver outstanding care to our patients and their families. So let's see the moment now where the winner was presented with their award. It's our 40th birthday this year and unfortunately with Covid we've not quite celebrated how we wanted to at the hospital. But I'm really pleased to say we still have a 40-year-old hero, and that's a member of our staff. And the person chosen by the public and the hospital was one of our porters, Richard. Richard is a true diamond, so we're just going to go off now and give Richard his award. And um, unbelievable, over 37 years' service here at the Trust, one of the kindest men I know, doing lots of things for patients and staff and he really deserves this award, so I'm absolutely delighted. So we're just going to go and find him. Richard? Do you know what's happening? I do. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> do you know, well, I've got a surprise for you. Oh, yeah? You have won our 40, yeah, Hero Award from our 
staff. So we've been 40 years here as a trust, haven't we? Yes. You've worked for over 37 years. I have, yes. Loads of staff, members of the public said you deserve this award. So it's with real pleasure I'm giving you our 40 year hero award for the care you give our patients and our staff and where you look after everyone. Um, I'm just over the moon, it's you, because I love you to bits. But this is from everyone at Team QA. So a huge, huge thank you. Richard, you're out here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't expect this at all. And there's a little treat in this card for you to oh. treat yourself at Christmas. Oh, God. Thank you so much. Oh, we shall hang you now. <laughs> Thank you. So, members of the team and everyone, and, and the words that people said, kindest man, always helpful, does everything for patients, so pleased you come back from retirement. Oh, hundreds God. and hundreds of people have said you truly deserve this. Oh, so it's just amazing. So please take this. Thank you. And have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. I will. And thank you so much for your service to the Queen Elizabeth. Yep. It means so My much pleasure. to us all. My pleasure. Thank you. Woo! Woo! Absolute shock. You don't do this stuff. You don't do this job for this. You do it because you care. You put yourself in their shoes and you'd want someone to be kind and good to you and look after you and feel safe. So you do this job for that because that's how you want to be treated yourself. So that's why I do this job. But you don't do it for anything and recognition. Your recognition is knowing that a patient that you've looked after has had the best care they deserve and their relatives are happy. That's what it, that's what it boils down to. So this brings us to the end of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital 2020 Awards. What an evening. Inspiring and awesome. And a huge thank you. We know that last year hasn't been easy at all. And over the coming months, things look set to become tough again. As we continue to navigate COVID alongside our normal winter pressures. However, if tonight has shown us anything, it's that by working together, looking after and supporting one another, we will get through this. I don't have any doubts about that whatsoever. I hope and believe that this time next year we will be celebrating even more exceptional work, but this time all of us together. Thank you so much for everything that you do for Team QEH. It is hugely appreciated. I hope you've enjoyed this event. Good night. <laughs>